Good morning, everyone. So I hope that the online students can see me and hear me clearly. All okay, I hope. Okay. So in today's session, we are going to discuss a very important topic for both prelims and the main exam. And the topic is delimitation. Let us first see what all we will try to understand in today's session. First is we will understand what is the exercise of delimitation. What is delimitation? Second, we will try to understand that why this exercise of delimitation has to be carried out after every few years. In our country, usually it is supposed to be done after every census. So why do we have to repeat this exercise? And third, we will try to see certain relevant provisions in our constitution. The relevant constitutional provisions with respect to delimitation of constituencies. Okay, let us start with first, why do we have to carry out delimitation? I hope you all understand and realize that we are living in an indirect or representative democracy. What does that mean? Democracy. The word literally means crazy. Crazy means rule. Demo means population or people. So the literal dictionary meaning of democracy would be a political system in which people rule themselves or people govern themselves. That means the people of a society or of a country, they make laws for the country, they draft various rules for the country, and they directly take decisions which affect the governance of the country. Such a direct democracy where all citizens participate in decision making and law making, this kind of democracy may have been possible when the size of the nation states was small. For example, in ancient, in ancient Greece, let us take the example of Athens, where we find the roots of democratic system. In Athens, such a direct democracy was practiced where every citizen will participate in lawmaking and other decision-making processes. But when I say every citizen, there are some qualifications for that. For example, to participate in democracy in those times in Athens, you should have been a native born Greek. That means you cannot be a foreigner or an outsider. You should be an adult. Then elderly were not allowed. Elderly were not allowed to participate in decision-making in democracy. Women were not allowed. And you should be belonging to the class of masters. The class of masters. That means if you belong to a class of slaves, you do not have the right to participate in decision making or law making. It means even when Athens was practicing a direct democracy more than 2000 years ago, that direct democracy was not allowing everybody to participate in decision making. So automatically the size of the population which is participating in democratic decision making, it comes down. So only the native born Greeks adults, not the elderly, no women, that means only males and only the class of masters, not the slaves were allowed to take part in decision making in law making. In modern times, in 21st century, the size of democracies, the population size has grown so big that it is practically not feasible that you allow all citizens to take part in direct decision making. And therefore, what we practice is a form of democracy, which is called indirect. Indirect, or you can call it as representative, representative 
democracy. That means a system where people of the country, after every few years, elect their representatives. And these representatives, on the behalf of people of the country, make rules, make regulations, make laws, and make decisions to govern the country. Now, once I hope you understand that why we have representative democracy, the next question which arises is that by what system, by what method can the people of a country elect their representatives? Here comes the question of representative justice. Representative justice. Which means that every citizen of a country should have right to participate in elections so that he or she can choose his or her representative. And everybody should have equal votes and everybody's value of the vote should also be equal. So a democracy becomes a genuine, authentic democracy when every citizen has equal number of votes or let us say one vote and everybody's vote has equal value. Only then you can say that this democracy is based on representative justice. This brings us to the topic of today's class that is delimitation. That to ensure representative justice and to ensure that every citizen has equal value of his vote, we have to every few years carry out the exercise of delimitation. Now, how can we define delimitation? A simple definition, delimitation is the act or the process of drawing the boundaries or fixing the limits of territorial constituencies in such a manner that as nearly as possible, every constituency should have equal population. So in simple words, what we do is, let me explain this concept to you by a simple example. Let us say if our country, India, was in the shape of a rectangle. And let us say the population of the country is very evenly distributed throughout the country. So whatever population India has, it is very evenly distributed throughout the country. Very evenly distributed. Whether it is desert or whether it is jungle or whether these are urban areas, we have nearly equal density of population. So what we can do is a simple exercise to choose our representatives. We can divide our country into constituencies which have similar size. So if I draw this symmetrical diagram, let us say this becomes one constituency. And as we assumed that every constituency is going to have equal population because we assumed that the entire country has evenly distributed density of population. So all these constituencies end up having same population and therefore from each constituency, one representative can be elected. Now we can say by the system that every citizen has equal value of his vote as far as choosing his representative is concerned. But we know this very well that our assumption was wrong because the density of the population in the country is not same at every place. So we have to draw the boundaries of these constituencies in such a manner, in such a manner that we take into account the density of the population. And this job is done by exercise of delimitation. Now, let us look at the relevant articles in our constitution, which deal with delimitation. Those articles are Article 81 and Article 82. What does Article 81 say? Article 81 says that we have to divide. So it consists of two steps. First step is we have to take the seats of Lok Sabha, that is 543. And we have to divide these seats 
to all the states of India, allocate these seats to all the states of India and UTs in a ratio. And what is that ratio? That ratio is that the number of seats, number of seats allotted to a state divided by population of that state, of that state. This ratio should be same for all states of India and the constitution says as far as practicable because sometimes it may not be practicable to have this ratio same for all states because of geographical reasons, certain geographical barriers, we may not always have, but as far as practicable, the number of seats given to a state in Lok Sabha divided by population of that state, this ratio should be same. For example, let us say if we have given 80 seats to UP in Lok Sabha divided by population of UP, population of UP, this ratio should be equal to, let us say, if West Bengal has 42 seats in Lok Sabha, population of West Bengal, or let us say if Andhra Pradesh has 25 seats in Lok Sabha, 25 upon population of Andhra Pradesh, this ratio should be same for all states of India. The second step in Article 81 of Constitution is whatever number of seats have been allotted to every state and UT, we have to now divide that state into the same number of territorial constituencies in such a manner that as nearly as po possible, as nearly as practicable, the ratio, what is that ratio? The ratio is population in each constituency, constituency, constituency divided by number of seats of the state of the state in Lok Sabha. This ratio should be same for each territorial constituency as far as practicable. Again, the same phrase as far as practicable. Now by this exercise of delimitation, the two steps, the first step is that we take total number of seats in Lok Sabha, we divide the seats to all the states so that this ratio is same for all these states. And second step, we divide all the states into constituencies and how many constituencies? The same as they have seats in Lok Sabha. It means we will divide UP into 80 constituencies. We will divide West Bengal into 42 constituencies likewise. We draw the boundaries of these constituencies in such a manner that population in each constituency divided by number of seats of the state in Lok Sabha, this ratio is same for every constituency in the state. Now, if you can observe in this exercise, the most important part is population, population, population population, population. So why is population such an important significant factor in this exercise? Because as I explained that every citizen, the value of his vote should be equal. Let me explain to you how it can be unequal. And by the way, Supreme Court, Supreme Court in a case called R.C. Podial, R.C. Podial versus Union of India, 1993, has held that to ensure representative justice, we have to make sure that we have delimitation according to the population census. Let us take an example. Let us say this is a constituency and this is a second constituency. Let us say this constituency is an urban constituency and therefore it has very high density of population. Let us say in this geographical constituency, you have 20 lakh population, 20 lakh population. And let us say this is a rural constituency 
and let's say population density is not so huge let us say it has only 10 lakh population 10 lakh population so the people of this constituency 20 lakh people who are the voters of this constituency they will elect one representative similarly the voters of this constituency will choose another representative now tell me because these constituencies have different population size can we say that the value of vote of these 20 lakh people is equal to the value of vote of these 10 lakh people no here the value of vote of this constituency the people of this constituency the value of their vote is double than the value of vote of people of this constituency because here 10 lakh people are electing one constituency uh, sorry one representative whereas here 20 lakh people are electing one representative it means the people of this constituency their vote its value is double than that of people of this constituency to make it even simpler let me take an extreme example let us say this constituency has not 10 lakh population it has only one person residing it has only one let us say one person who lives in this constituency so the population of this constituency is only one now this one person is going to elect one representative one mp whereas here 20 lakh people will elect one representative or let's say one member of parliament that means this person his votes value is very 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 high as compared to the value of vote of these 20 lakh people so this is inequality or you can say in terms of supreme court this is not representative justice therefore now you realize that the entire exercise in article 81 which is based on population has to be repeated because population is a dynamic concept it's not static it changes with time so in different states of india and in different constituencies the demographic growth rate the population growth rate may not be the same similarly in constituencies the growth rate population growth rate in migration out migration may not be the same so now we come to article 82 article 82 says that after every census you have to readjust readjust what two things first the number of seats number of seats allotted to every state to all the states of india and second you have to now redraw the boundaries of constituencies boundaries of constituencies in such a manner that again in all the constituencies of india as far as practicable every constituency has equal population so that all the mps of lok sabha have been elected by same number of people by the same population so this exercise has to be repeated after every census we have to readjust now constitution says that this exercise of delimitation has to be carried out by an authority as determined by the president and that authority is actually now the delimitation commission now our parliament so far has enacted certain delimitation acts delimitation acts the first such act was in 1952 second was in 1962 third was in 1972 and then fourth one was in 2002 under these acts the central government has the power to establish a commission called as delimitation commission so under this act delimitation commission delimitation commission was set up 
and in art in year 1952 under this act delimitation commission was set up in 1963 under this act a commission was set up in 1973 and under this we have another delimitation commission in 2002 so the last delimitation commission was 2002 one more thing i hope you have realized that after every census when we are passing a new delimitation act under which central government will establish a delimitation commission and then that commission will do the job of allocating seats to all these states and drawing the boundaries of the constituencies now imagine that from 1951 census to next 1961 census in these 10 years there can be some states of india which did not perform very well in terms of controlling their population growth rate so we know very well that south indian states have performed better in controlling their population so in these 10 years if certain north indian states did not perform well in population control family planning and as a result their population growth rate was higher so what will happen that after 61 census when we will repeat exercise of delimitation those states of north india will benefit because according to population ratio they will now get higher seats in lok sabha similarly from 61 to 71 if these states still did not control their population and we will again repeat delimitation exercise they will again benefit by getting even higher seats in lok sabha that is why after these three delimitations what parliament will do indira gandhi was the prime minister the parliament will enact after this 42nd constitutional amendment act 1976 and for 25 years the delimitation exercise will be frozen that means from 76 25 years is 2001 in this year 2001 atal bihari vajpay was our prime minister he will again bring a cab in parliament and by 84th amendment he will further extend it for 25 years till 2026 now i hope you understand we are doing this freezing of delimitation because we want to encourage these states to control population growth and to take family planning seriously however in this attempt what we end up doing is we end up disturbing the representative justice that means one man one vote or every man's vote has equal value that principle has now got disturbed then what we will do is in by 87th constitutional amendment act we will say that we will again carry out delimitation but we will not change the seats allotted to states the number of seats as given to them according to 71 census by which commission by this commission by this commission sorry 73 commission the number of seats will remain the same the 2002 commission will only readjust the boundaries of constituencies within each state so that at least within each state every constituency has equal population so remember the fourth delimitation commission did not change the total number of seats allotted to states that is still the same as per 1971 census as done by 1973 delimitation commission the fourth commission will only change the boundaries of constituencies within every state so that within a state every constituency has equal population so within a state every citizen has one man one vote or everybody's vote has equal value let me show you how these constituencies look like after delimitation so this is telangana telangana has 17 seats in lok sabha 
so we divide the map of telangana into 17 territorial or geographical constituencies number 1 constituency number 2 number 3 number 4 and the boundaries of these constituencies are drawn in such a manner that as far as practicable each has equal population arunachal pradesh up 80 seats in lok sabha west bengal 42 seats in lok sabha andhra pradesh 25 seats in lok sabha and i hope maybe you have guessed that these are the reserved seats these are sc reserved seats and these are sc reserved seats so we have total 84 seats in lok sabha out of 543 reserved for scs and 47 seats out of 543 reserved for sts so if this is an sc reserved seat it means only sc candidate can contest from this constituency but the electorate is joint so we do not have adopt we have not adopted the concept of separate electorates as brought by british in india now i mentioned earlier that delimitation commission delimitation commission is set up by central government right it has a supreme court judge as its chairman second member is the chief election commissioner let me change the color of the pen or election commissioner as cc may nominate right and third is the state election commissioner the state election commissioner of the state in which the commission is doing its exercise also please note that five mps of the same state where the commission is doing the exercise of the limitation and five mlas of the same state also act as associate members of the limitation commission act as associate members of the limitation commission these members only act as observers and they do not have voting rights in the working of the limitation commission this commission gives its report to the president and after its report is published in the gazette of the government of india it has same force as that of law and one thing that you have to remember very important for exam that the orders of this commission once published in the gazette are not subject to appeal so the orders once published in gazette are not subject to appeal or review subject to appeal or review in any court of india you cannot challenge them even in supreme court the delimitation commission its orders are also laid before lok sabha and all the vidhan sabhas but they cannot be amended so remember the orders are full final and cannot be appealed and cannot be amended even by lok sabha or vidhan sabhas one more thing that the delimitation commission act section 10a if i remember correctly it empowers the president to differ it empowers the president that he may differ the exercise differ means delay or you can say temporarily postpone that he can defer the exercise of delimitation if he feels that the unity and integrity of india is threatened or there is some issue of public order or peace or peace now in 2002 when we will have our fourth delimitation the president of india will use his power under this section and he will defer this delimitation exercise in certain states of india and those states were jammu and kashmir arunachal pradesh assam nagaland nagaland and manipur and manipur that is why remember the last delimitation commission did not perform delimitation exercise in context of these states one more thing please note 
that until august 2019 jammu and kashmir had its own constitution that is why jammu and kashmir lok sabha constituencies were delimited according to indian constitution whereas the vidhan sabha or the assembly constituencies of jammu and kashmir were delimited according to jnk's constitution now this topic becomes even more important because after jammu and kashmir has been bifurcated into two uts its delimitation is now been done by another commission which president of india set up in 2020 using his powers under section 3 so central government set up a commission under section 3 of uh, the same act 2002 and a new commission has been set up to perform delimitation exercise for the newly carved duty of jammu and kashmir one more thing that president of india used his powers under section 10a and deferred delimitation in these states but now president of india has taken back this order so now maybe in near future we may see an exercise of delimitation even for these states of india for jnk anyways it has been recently completed so even for these states we may see delimitation exercise very soon okay so let me revise certain important facts for exam first articles are 81 and 82 article 81 talks about allocation of seats to states in lok sabha and division of the states into territorial constituencies article 82 talks about readjustment of these of this exercise second it is done after every census so so far we have had four delimitation commissions and the fifth commission now for jammu and kashmir third we do this exercise of delimitation to ensure that one man one vote principle is upheld let me show you the relevant sections which i just mentioned so look at this the commission shall cause each of its orders to be published in the gazette of india right so the orders are published in the gazette okay now once these orders are published in the gazette every such order shall have the force of law and shall not be called in question in any court this is given where in delimitation act 2002 now these orders are also laid before house of the people that means lok sabha and all the vidhan sabhas but they cannot be amended okay now section 10 a i mentioned president of india has power deferment if president is satisfied that there is a threat to unity and integrity of india or there is a threat to peace and public order he may defer the delimitation exercise so the last commission the fourth delimitation commission did not perform delimitation because of this use of power now this is the latest commission set up for jammu and kashmir in exercise of the powers conferred by section 3 of delimitation act central government constitutes following commission so supreme court judge retired judge as chairman election commissioner member and third is the state election commissioner and then associate members five mps and five mlas of the same state look at this question which upsc has asked i hope you all can now solve this question this statement is correct this is given in article 324 this is correct given in article 325 of our constitution <clears throat> this is correct parliament has the power it can make laws given in article 327 now this is what is wrong 
the supreme court of india has the authority to scrutinize the validity of a law relating to delimitation of constituencies the answer is no so as we mentioned that the orders of the delimitation commission are final and cannot be challenged this is wrong so answer is d so i hope the exercise of delimitation why do we carry it out why do we want to uphold principle of one man one vote what supreme court observed in rc podial case 1993 why the allocation of seats was frozen by 42nd amendment and why in jnk we had delimitation now why it was deferred earlier all these questions if asked in exam i hope you all can answer the next topic for discussion is article 142 of indian constitution which has recently been in news in context of the supreme court exercising its power under this article and giving the liberty back to perali valan one of the convict in rajiv gandhi assassination case this will be our next topic of discussion